Thank you for coming. It's great to be here at Web Summit and to have the chance to talk to you about quantum computing. Quantum represents a giant leap forward for computing. As we look over the past 4,000 years, the history of compute, one could argue that the fundamental building blocks for compute haven't changed that much. Whether we're moving beads on an abacus from left to right, or we're flipping transistors on and off for ones and zeros, left, right, one, zero, arguably different words for the same underlying building block, where we have this one-to-one -one representation of data. The technology, of course, has changed dramatically over that time. We're packing more and more transistors onto chips. We've had this incredible journey with Moore's Law. And despite all of those advancements, all of the algorithmic improvements that we've made over that time, and the seemingly limitless compute power that we have in our cloud, some problems remain completely intractable. Problems that would take longer than the lifetime of the universe on these conventional building blocks. As we stand here at the dawn of the quantum era, we're really talking about doing two things. We're building computers out of radically different building blocks, where the bits are no longer just ones and zeros, but can be one and zero at the same time. And we have to disrupt our thinking. We need to learn to program these computers in radically different ways. And it turns out that these new building blocks and this new type of quantum thinking allow us to solve these intractable problems in hours or days. And so this is the journey that we need to go on together. So over the course of this presentation, I'm going to talk about how quantum is so different and why. Talk about these key application areas that quantum will allow us to disrupt. I'll talk about what it means to build scalable quantum systems. And I'll talk about, at the end, how you can get prepared for this coming revolution. So what are these intractable problems that we can't solve with the conventional building blocks? This is a picture of the fastest supercomputer in the world. It's 200 petaflops. It's located at Oak Ridge National Lab. This computer can do a good job of simulating the chemical properties of simple molecules, like this one, caffeine. But once the molecules get even slightly more complicated, uh, here's an iron molybdenum complex. It's just a little bit bigger. And we start to have different atoms show up, things like iron. And the orbital structures are a little bit more complicated. It would take this computer longer than the lifetime of the universe to simulate the chemical properties of this molecule in a way that's useful for us. So why is this? Well, it turns out that nature fundamentally speaks the language of quantum physics. And to even answer really simple questions, like why is this leaf green, we need to deeply understand quantum physics. There's so much information contained in the orbital structures of these quantum systems that conventional building blocks could never, ever hope to scale. So what are these quantum building blocks that we're building the computers out of? Well, to explain why quantum computers are so powerful, I'll go back to classical computers. So as we look inside the, uh, the laptops that I see around the room, the tablets, the phones, they're all made up of transistors at their heart. And transistors are simply little switches. And we can turn them on and off, and we map these to ones and zeros, and this is binary. And when we need more computational power, we need to do more complex calculations, we scale up and build more transistors. Quantum particles, on the other hand, are not just ones and zeros, but they can be one and zero at the same time in a state that we call superposition. And to explain why this superposition is so powerful, I'll go back to my classical building blocks. So here I have a register of four classical bits, each of which can be one or zero, and they can be in any one of 16 combinations. 
but they, this register only has one value. And so when I put this register through an algorithm, I have to choose one of these 16 combinations. Here's a quantum register of four quantum bits. And because each one of these bits can be 0 and 1 at the same time, now I can program just a simple 4-bit register as a linear superposition of all 16 of those combinations at the same time. And I can compute on them at the same time. And you might say, well, I, I know that I can do massively parallel computations classically. And you're right. But to have the computational power that's held in these, this simple register of four bits, I would need a copy for all of those classical bits. And so I would need all the bits on the left to represent the quantum bits on the right. And so this, you, know, you may be familiar with this parable of the chessboard. And so uh, the, the parable goes, there was a, a master craftsman making these chessboards. And as a reward, he asked the king for a, a few grains of rice. Uh, and on the first square, there would be one grain of rice. And on every subsequent square, the grains of rice would double. Now, of course, I can't show you very much of the chessboard, uh, because the trick here is that by the end of the chessboard, there are more than 10 to the 19 grains of rice. This is the exponential scaling that we get with quantum computing. Every time you add a bit to the quantum register, the, number, the, the computational power doubles. And so let's put some numbers against this. Once you have 30 quantum bits, this is something you can probably do on your laptop. It's a 16 gigabyte workload. At 40 qubits, this is a 16 terabyte workload. This we have to run in the data center. We can simulate these quantum systems in Azure. At 50 qubits, this is a 16 petabyte workload. Now we're reaching the limits of classical compute. And the fun fact that I like to use here is that once you get up to 260 bits of quantum information, just think about it, 260 bits, what would you do with that classically? 260 bits of quantum information, to represent that with our conventional building blocks, we would need a computer that had more bits than there are atoms in the known visible universe. So that's the scaling with quantum computing. We're really talking about solving problems that classical computers will never be able to solve. So what are these problems that scale much better with these new quantum building blocks? Well, the first one that I want to talk to you about is quantum chemistry. And the problem is fixing nitrogen into the soil. This is critical for farming to have healthy soil and high plant yields. And the way that we do this is, is with a the artificial fertilizer, we have this incredible discovery that was made over 100 years ago in Germany called the Haber-Bosch process. It allows us to have a chemical process to fix nitrogen into the soil to make these artificial fertilizers. But it's intensely energy intensive. It consumes about 3% of the world's natural gas. But we know that nature can do this much more efficiently. And the way that this works is that you know, farmers, before they had artificial fertilizer, would rotate crops through. And specifically, they'd rotate beans, because beans have the property of fixing nitrogen into the soil. And they don't require a power plant to do it. And the way that this works is there's a bacteria that lives in the roots of the bean plants. And that bacteria produces an enzyme. And that enzyme acts as a catalyst that can slice through the triple bond that holds nitrogen atoms together in the atmosphere and fix it into the soil. But we can't understand how that process works. At the heart of that enzyme is a molecule that would take us longer than the lifetime of the universe to understand. Is that iron molybdenum complex I had up on the screen a few slides ago. But the quantum computer can natively inhabit the quantum state of that molecule and allow us to do precise simulations in a fraction of the time. So this computation that would take us longer than the lifetime of the universe on these conventional building blocks can be solved in a couple days with as few as 200 qubits. So incredibly powerful. It's long been the dream of physicists and material scientists to have a material that would superconduct at room temperature. Imagine electrons going zipping by near the speed of light with no losses. 
The possibilities are endless for what we could make with a material like that. But if we consider it from an economic perspective for a second, we lose 15% of all electricity generated just through losses in the materials in our grids. If we could design, use the quantum computer to design a new compound, we could remove those losses. Okay, the last example problem area that I want to talk about is optimization. Our cities continue to explode. They're dynamic, ever-changing systems. I think probably everyone in this room has experienced the traffic and the congestion that we brought to Lisbon for this incredible event. And these problems, solving this problem like traffic optimization, these are incredibly hard problems to solve. There are lots of different solutions to the problem and lots of constraints that have to be satisfied. These problems explode computationally. And it's not just optimization. It's job scheduling, route planning, portfolio optimization, risk management. These problems show up all over in our customers' businesses. And I talked about you know, what we're doing with quantum computing is two things. We're building with these new building blocks, and we're learning to solve problems in new ways. And when we learn to solve these problems with a quantum computer, uh, so this is how we solve them. We, we map them into an energy landscape. The worst solutions show up as the peaks, and the best solutions show up as the valleys. And the task is to get to the lowest solution. And it turns out that that's really hard to do because this is very simple. But in, in real optimization problems, there are hundreds, thousands, or millions of variables. And so you can find yourself locally optimizing in one of these local minima. But quantum particles can tunnel out and get to a much better solution much more quickly. And what's exciting about this is that just that quantum type thinking has led us to breakthroughs where we can run these on classical architectures already today. The power that comes from learning to solve problems in a new way. And in some cases, this can give orders of magnitude speed improvements. So a problem that might take you hours on conventional architectures could be solved in milliseconds on a quantum computer. And to share an example of a customer that's working with us with this quantum technology, this quantum type thinking, to disrupt their industry today, I want you to hear from them as they talk about the solution in the healthcare industry. Modern healthcare today is really based on imaging. In the area of MRI scanners, we've developed a technology here called magnetic resonance fingerprinting that really allows us to take a quantitative picture of the patient's body. Microsoft is providing optimized quantum-inspired algorithms to really solve our hard problems, using them to make MRI faster, cheaper, and more efficient to help people all over the world with this technology. Microsoft and Case Western Reserve are working together to push the forefront of healthcare technology using algorithms that look at the world in a quantum way. We can go much, much faster than any classical algorithm that's been out there to date. These quantum-inspired algorithms are giving us a window into a future that we just didn't think about before. And we want to use that power to find diagnoses and treatments that mankind just has not been able to come up with yet. Quantum computing is going to allow us to solve problems that we never thought we could. This quantum type thinking is going to open new doors that we haven't had before. These quantum computers will be in our Azure data center. This is the ultimate intelligent cloud. We are going to be able to make profound impacts in the world with quantum computing, whether it's healthcare, whether it's climate change, whether it's food production. And I just can't wait to see the impact that this is going to make on people's lives. So we've talked about the application areas, and hopefully now you're as excited as I am about the potential for quantum computing. So now I want to shift over and talk about how Microsoft is working to put this technology into your hands. This is our strategy for quantum computing. If you've been keeping up with this field, reading about it in the news, you've probably heard that there's a handful of companies building qubits, quantum computers. But the fundamental issue with qubits is that they're inherently fragile. Any interactions at all with the environment causes them to lose the quantum information, and we no longer have these magical properties. So at the heart of our strategy is building the world's most stable qubit. We're redesigning the qubit for scale from the ground up out of a new phase of matter 
that we've invented in our labs, discovered in our labs. This allows us orders of magnitude improvement in the stability of these systems, which means that we can build qubits that can perform longer, more complex computations with far fewer resources. But the quantum hardware is not enough. In fact, it might not be the hardest part of building a quantum computer. We need a full end-to-end -end solution with all of the layers of the compute stack architected for scale from the ground up. And so we're building this end-to-end -end solution. Just as we're reimagining what the quantum hardware could be, we're doing that at every layer of the stack, building the scalable control systems. You think about conventional data centers, they're hot and noisy. That doesn't reconcile with, with qubits that need to be kept isolated. And we're building scalable software architectures to allow programmers to design algorithms and applications for these machines. And of course, for this to be useful for you, for our customers, it has to be seamlessly integrated into Azure. Quantum will be one of these co-processors in Azure, just as we have CPUs deployed at scale and acceleration options with GPUs and FPGAs. Quantum will be one of these acceleration options that's available to you in the cloud. So what are these? What do these systems look like? Well, this is the inside of one of these systems. Uh, to keep these quantum bits from losing their quantum information, we have to keep them really cold, which means we put them inside a dilution refrigerator. The quantum hardware sits down at the bottom. We keep it at 15 millikelvin. It's 100 times colder than deep space at the heart of this system. And so architecting this compute stack looks really different. So at the heart of this is a scalable qubit foundation. We need new cryogenic systems. All of this system has to scale, not unlike Moore's law, beyond the tens of qubits to hundreds, thousands, and even millions. So everything in this picture has to be reimagined and designed. We need new inventions at this quantum classical interface. We can't let this system interact with the rest of our data center. So we're building a cryogenic computer that's vastly more performant than CMOS to control the quantum hardware. We need new platforms for identifying and correcting errors. We need a scalable software stack. And I'm going to go into more detail in that next. Full integration with Azure, as I mentioned. And of course, the algorithms and the real world applications. And these are going to come from you. This is where we'd like you to come with us on this journey. Reinvent your thinking and learn how these, this technology can be used to solve problems in your industry. To get you started on your quantum journey, we've released the Microsoft Quantum Development Kit. It's the best software architecture for programming these scalable computers. We've got tens of thousands of developers who've downloaded this and are actively using it. It's written by world-class software engineers, and it's designed for programmers. So those of you who are familiar with the Microsoft tools, it should look familiar. We've developed a new programming language called q -sharp. It's a quantum native programming language. To write scalable, durable quantum code, you need a programming language that speaks the language of quantum mechanics. It comes with a rich set of dev tools, quantum debugging tools. It turns out we have to debug our code in a really different way when it's one and zero at the same time. And it comes with a suite of simulators where we can test and debug small instances of algorithms and know the runtime of these quantum algorithms before we have the quantum computer. You don't need to wait for the quantum hardware to be available at scale. You can start with these tools now. And it comes with all the building blocks that you need to get started, a rich set of libraries and sample code. It's open source. And you can incorporate these libraries and these building blocks into your code. We just released a chemistry library. You can start developing applications in chemistry, material science, machine learning, optimization. And we've released, when you come to the website to download, we've re released a set of learning modules, these quantum katas, to accelerate your skill building. So we know that new physics leads to new technologies. As we look over the history uh, of, of technology from the laws of thermodynamics that empowered the, that enabled the Industrial Revolution to Maxwell's equations that are powering our economy today, compute and high-speed communications. We have these physics 
these, these physics phenomena that have yet to be fully exploited, quantum superposition, quantum measurement, and entanglement. And now we're at the point where we're bringing the science and the engineering together to, to scale up these systems. So it's time to get started. What does this mean for you? As innovators in your field, quantum represents an incredible innovation opportunity. But to, to fully realize it, you have to disrupt your thinking. We're building the quantum computer. We expect to have a commercial quantum computer within five years. But we're also building the tools to make sure that you're successful with this technology. So my call to action for you today is to, to get started. Download the quantum development kit. You can start teleporting quantum bits on your laptop today. It's really fun. Invest in the people and the projects to, to build the skill set in your organizations. There's going to be a shortage of talent for quantum. It's estimated that less than 1% of the scientists and engineers have the critical skills to make use of this technology. And start to develop the use case for your organization. I work with customers every single day who are going on their own quantum journey. And it's amazing to see the light bulb moments that happen when they realize what can happen when they can break through these computational roadblocks and start to solve these problems that will change our industrial and economic and societal landscape. And I want that for you too. Thank you.